So who was Ada Lovelace? Um, she was a Victorian mathematician um, who died in 1852. Uh, she was the first computer programmer um, and is now known as a figurehead uh, for the International Celebration of Women in STEM. Um, and every year, the 9th of October, which was yesterday's Ada Lovelace Day, and their celebrations um, across the world dedicated to Ada. So, from experience, my experience, other people's experience, uh, awareness and awareness campaigning can have some flaws and limitations. Uh, I'm going to detail a couple of those using campaigns that you may be familiar with, you may not. Who here has heard of the Plastic Straw campaign? Uh, hands up please. Excellent. Okay, so plastic straws. Everyone is suddenly dropping plastic straws because heightened awareness that plastic waste in the ocean is having a disproportionate impact on the ocean's wildlife, specifically turtles. I think there's a video that's gone pretty viral with a turtle having a straw pulled out of its nose. Uh, so everyone, ah, oh, when you biodegradable straws. Plastic straws actually make up 0.3% of plastic waste out in the ocean. So in terms of the impact on wildlife, it's probably not going to change that much, guys. Uh, really, if you wanted an impactful campaign, you would have gone to industry and said, guys, why are you producing so much plastic that's just going to get thrown away and not recycled? So alertness. Rather than awareness, somebody who is alert recognises the signs of, for instance, domestic violence and can reach out to someone and say, can I help you? What can I do to help? Uh, they know how to act. Active bystander training, for instance, is all about equipping people to recognise that something is wrong, that there is an incident ongoing, and the role they play in stepping in. So what are we facing? There's this typical, as they call the old boy network, um, a lot of the things may be uh, of discrimination. We're very much more aware about unconscious bias. And at every interview panel and at every uh, review panel, we should be, again, starting with reminding ourselves that we all have unconscious bias. And that hopefully will start to, to change things. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not a football fan. Um, I'm sure there are many women who are football fans, but there are lots of, of social gatherings that perhaps either the timing or the subject um, isn't very uh, uh, interest to, to female colleagues. Uh, often a lack of mentorship, that's improving, but uh, for a very long time there weren't many role models or people willing to, act, to actively mentor others in their career. A lack of confidence, that I can put my hand up and say that plagued me. Uh, <clears throat> differences in male and female scientists, there's some debate out there, but we know that, that for example, in boards, that the, the performance of the company is influenced by the diversity of the board. So more women on the board increases the company's success. So they must be contributing something different than their male colleagues for that success. Career breaks are challenging and extreme work demands. So if you're, it's for all of us really maintaining that work-life balance. I'm really glad um, intersectionality was raised because that's something quite close to me. I think like obviously I'm a woman, I'm also obviously not white and um, the not white bit has been something that's taken a lot more of a precedent in my life in STEM than being a woman. Um, when you said like being able to walk into a room and not notice that like you're the only woman, that's never the thing that I notice, it's always the thing that I'm the only non-white person in the room and um, that raises like a lot of issues like for it's kind of like a, it's a burden you bear, you know? So like, obviously I talk about women in science, in science a lot, but for me it's there's literally like no black boys in science, you know? And that, that's an issue, but that's not a women in science issue. That's a, and you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of intersections there that we don't really discuss and we don't really get into. Even kind of with the Florence Nightingale example, like at school you're taught about Florence Nightingale, but you're never taught about Mary Seacole. Um, if you want my opinions on race, just follow me on Twitter or find me later, because that's another story. <laughs> but um, I think um, with how boys and girls are raised, that's so important. I have two younger brothers in a way. Like, my parents aren't, like, trying to raise, like, sexist children, but, like, even the subtle things, you know, like, um, for me, it was don't cry like a baby. For my brothers, it's don't cry like a girl. And um, my friend pointed out the boys' T-shirts. She works at Next always say like genius and like amazing and like brave and stuff like that whereas girls will be like princess um 
and that's so important. I don't think it's the, and I think what you're saying is spot on about like um, A level being too late. I don't think girls choose to not take science. Girls are conditioned out of science being an option from a young age. I think it would be interesting to find out how much things like unconscious bias are actually taught when people train as teachers. So things like when you do your PG certs, I don't know how much that's a thing. Um, and I think that would be really interesting to investigate because I know there's a lot of women um, that are primary school teachers. So I think this whole debate is interesting with that as an element in itself. There is a project called the Aspires Project, which was originally at King's. And until Louise Archer, who used to be in uh, social sciences across the river, moved to UCL. It's now at UCL. And they did a terrific, it's a longitudinal study, and they show that pre-puberty, um, science is equally popular amongst boys and girls, actually. And that whatever happens in primary school, an awful lot of blue and pink happens in primary schools, um, it doesn't seem to put people off science. And it's only when um, gender gender starts to be defined, people start to construct their own gender, that you seem to have the big effects coming in. Um, and, uh, and so while it is certainly true that external um, biases and prejudices and gender stereotyping matter, it is also true that an awful lot goes on from the early years of secondary to the later years of secondary. Um, and she also says, actually, that these are really tough issues to address. Events like today, where we celebrated Ada Lovelace Day, are very important because they allow us to celebrate the success and contributions of women in STEM, but they also highlight the continuing problem of gender inequality in these subjects. One of the things that being a, a woman in a, a male-dominated field does to you is that you feel very lonely and you can feel very isolated being one of the only women in the room. So it's amazing to come and meet other women and share experiences and, and feel like you belong to a community. By not being more diverse, we don't get the, get the best talent into the talent pool. If we're going to be successful, we need the best people to be doing things. We need the best people to be driving forward technology. We need the best people to be teaching. We need the best people to be our leaders. If we only have half of the population or uh, a small proportion of the population in that talent pool, we lose out. It's that simple. We've had some quite sort of utopian and inspirational suggestions at the event today. So I think one of the main things we can do is just be mindful of ourselves and what we're, like how we address people and how we speak to people. So we all have unconscious biases and there's, you know, there are things that we can do to combat that and some of that's increasing our own awareness. But really it's about thinking about the words that we choose to say when we speak to people and the impact those words can have. People can really step up uh, and challenge themselves uh, and their communities. We spoke a lot about uh, gender stereotyping today. Uh, I think everyone has a role to play in challenging gender stereotyping and sexist behaviour when they see it uh, and providing that leadership uh, within a committee, within a classroom, wherever they are to say no, that's actually not good enough and that's not the standard that King's upholds itself to.